Hello anyone watching this on replay. All right, guys, today we're doing stock pace times two because we all know how much I love it and my supply is running very low. So tonight we're gonna to start off with the classic vegetable stock paste. Now, if you are a Thermomix owner and you don't have stock paste in your life, hey Nick, uh, who are you? And we can't be friends because this stuff is amazing. It is a game changer. All right, evening Zach. So Zach, watch and learn because you are gonna be making this, my friend, very soon when yours is in your hot little hands. If it's not already, let me know. Because it can't be too far away. All right, so this recipe is super easy. And literally, you can use up what veggies you have in your fridge at home. Now, I have a very sad looking bunch of celery that's actually done that. It's that sad. It's been in my, it's uh, in a Tupperware container in the fridge for eh, a little while. So perfect, perfect stock ingredients. Uh, I also just happen to be missing zucchini. So I'm just going to swap, swap it. Tomorrow, the next day, oh, Zach, that's so exciting. And I've sent you a little care gift today as well from me. So hopefully that'll arrive around the same time as well. So yay, welcome to my new customers and existing and anyone else in between. Hello, hello. How are we going? So we're making stock, guys. Vegetable stock paste. I've written it on the board behind. We're doing it first. And then we're gonna get bowl number two and we're going to make chicken. So again, stock is something that you can use up any old veg you have to make. So if it's looking a bit sad, make stock out of it. Because trust me, if we knew what was in our food that we purchased from the shops, we probably would likely not eat it. So I've had these veggies just sitting in water here, um, getting ready to use. So hitting next, we want two carrots cut into pieces. Now, don't be shy. Cutting them into pieces is roughly about that size, okay? So chunks. Don't need to be too small with that. The machine will do the hard work for us. So again, throwing those in. A brown onion cut in half. So literally just taking that skin off cutting it in half and throwing it into the bowl. Hello, hello. Oh, hey, Caitlin, how are you? Um, so, tell me in the chat, what did you have for dinner tonight or have you had dinner yet? I had last night's leftovers in the end. I did put the sausages in the oven for the boys. They were happy with that. Okay, tomato. Cut in half, and any tomato, if you had a bunch of cherry tomatoes, use those. Zucchini I don't have, but I've got a bit of that cauliflower. So I'm just gonna sub it out for some of that. So again, use what you have. If you have veggies that look sad, make stock. And two garlic cloves. So I've got a mishmash of all the little end, odds and ends from my clove jar. So I'm going to probably put about four in here. Just for intention, everyone. Yes. Moroccan chicken, Liz, I saw that. Yum. Delicious. Guys, everyone uh, over on TikTok, if you could follow Elizabeth Kessels, you'll see her in the comments there. We want to get Liz up to 500 followers on TikTok so that we can go live together. That would be good fun. Chicken and chips. <laughs> Minestrone. Ooh. Now, who was telling me they put the risoni that I used last night in minestrone? You're not hungry? Went to the pub for lunch and had a Caesar schnitzel. Oh, that does sound nice, Zach. Okay, Zach, here's the question for you. What's Apart from stock, what's the first thing you're looking forward to making in your brand new Thermomix that's coming? Tell me this. Love to know. Oh, bay leaf, didn't get that, did I? So I said I was all hot and sweaty. I gave in and I put the air conditioner on, so I'm feeling a lot less hot and sweaty today. I'm 
just going to put two pieces of bay leaf there because I'm coming down to the end of the jar. Orange and almond cake. Mmm, that sounds good. There's lots of those. One of my favourites is the um, carrot, almond and carrot cake. It's really nice as well. It's a gluten-free cake. Delish. All right, so we're putting in the herbs now. So we've got some rosemary going in. I've got bits and pieces of basil from the garden here. Some sage. I will use my fresh sage for this one. <clears throat> but I've got sage from the freezer for the next batch. And next we want rosemary leaves only. Did that. <coughs> if I need something there. Basil. Basil. Bay leaf. Basil. Got. Yeah. Done. I'm jumping ahead of the game. Parsley that came in my farmer's box. That's going in here. Now what I generally do with this is just this. And make yogurt. Oh, excellent. I do this and I shove it in. <coughs> on top. Oh, dear. All right. Lid goes on. Now you'll see. I think you can see. That bowl is chocker, chocker block. But we're about to chop all that down. And here's the little trick. Okay, is to have your Thermomix spatula handy. This thing here stops it from hitting the blades. So we're going to use this to stir that inside and push that down. Because otherwise the blades will go around the bottom and all the herbs and everything at the top, they won't go down too. So, hey Andrea. So, here we go, speed six. Ten seconds of chopping. So, I don't care how many times I make this, this just never doesn't blow my socks off. Now, we've got one piece of parsley that's not made the grey, or two there, three little bits, the stalky bits, but check that out. So, what was a very full bowl of loads of vegetables and herbs is now that, which is our stock. So what I'll do is pull those leaves off that and ditch the stalks for now. So next instruction is to scrape down because our blades are designed to throw everything out up and down. So we want to scrape that back down because we're going to end up cooking that now. Listen, if you got to this point and you found that your stock uh, ingredients were still a little chunky on top, then it's a matter of pressing the back button. Do it again. It's not going to hurt it at all to repeat that step. And I saw you got that too, Zach. That's so fantastic. You'll love those things. All right, so next we're going to add in our rock salt. Now, the amount of times, and, and, and Liz will attest to this, any consultant out there watching will attest to this, we tell people to get rock salt and we turn up and they hand us the salt shaker. Okay, when you're making stock, if you've ever grabbed a stock cube and had a lick of it, it's a very salty thing. So stock is salty. It is also the preservative. So, have your rock salt. When you've got that, you've got your stock, okay? So rock salt is what's going to preserve this and keep it fresh for up to six months if necessary. You'll use it. You can freeze it as well. And if you add less salt than that amount, please freeze it uh, just to preserve it better. So this is the preservative. I put the full amount because as the tips say, when used with water, it is not too salty. It's actually perfect. Just like a stock cube or the stuff that you buy in a Tetra pack, okay? So you can cut that off your grocery bill. You do not need to buy that anymore. Tablespoon of olive oil. Little tip if you want to know, you can bring up the scales by those three little dots at the top, 20 grams. Bit of physical challenge, bang on, or eyeball it that's what i normally would do but just to show you that little tip there all right and then we want i'll take my herbs out of this little basket here we want to put this on and we're going to cook it so while that is cooking here's another little hot tip for you so if you've got a jar that's clean but perhaps you're not sure if it's sterile or not or not stick it in there while it's cooking and the steam will come up and give that a nice bit of sterilization for you. And that's as simple as that. Vegetable stock paste. So 
That's going to cook now for 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do actually is, so we can push on, grab my other machine, which is over there. So let me make space because while that's doing that for 20 minutes, we may as well be making the chicken. All right. Move that out of the way. We'll slide this up over here. I'll give you two shakes while I go and grab the other. I've had demos galore yesterday, so I've been giving all my machines a very good clean, thorough clean. So we're good to go for the markets tomorrow night. So back out, meeting people. All right, so next thing we need is another bowl. How is everyone today? Good, we're all good. And what else? Tell me. What's up, what's, what have you been cooking? What are you making? Let me know, have you made stock before? All right. Don't tell me no, because I'll be cranky. So what I'm doing now is going rogue and doing a manual cook, which I don't normally love to do, but I do like Skinny Mixes Chicken Stock Concentrate. So that's what I'm making. Now, it's a very simple recipe. You've just got to follow along, of course. And in it, it asks for 200 grams of beef or chicken dice. So it depends on what you're doing. For me, I'm doing chicken. So I'll grab another little mac here. Now I've got one chicken breast that I froze. It is still frozen. And that is fine because the first step of this recipe is to turn that into mince as such. So the machine does make a more even quicker mince of meat when it's slightly frozen. So I've had that in the freezer, I've just taken it out. It's still quite frozen. Yeah, as you can probably see. But that's gonna mince up really quick and easy. So we're gonna use our scales because when we go manual, we have to swipe and get the scales up and it wants 200 grams. I reckon I'll be pretty close, a little over. And you know what? That is perfectly fine. Now, let me just come here and wash my knife. So I need that for everything else again. And my hands. Alrighty. So, chicken is in, and it says, put the meat in there, grab a lid. There's one here. And we're going to chop that for 10 seconds, speed eight, with the measuring cup on. So I'm just going to go to speed eight. Ten seconds. And you hear the sound starting to change towards the end of doing that. So that's basically, it's done. So there we go. That, my friends, is chicken mince. So did you know you can mince your own meat in your Thermomix? So get your meat when it's on special, get the cheaper cuts, freeze them, and make your own mince. And it is far nicer than the shop bought stuff. There's a lot less water in it, and you know what's in it as well. That, I think, is very important. So that step's done, so we're gonna scrape that down. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my veggie stock a spatula because it's just got veggies on it so it's not going to hurt this because now we're going to add in the veggies as well so we're going to add in again we need the scales up because we're going manual so it wants 100 grams of roughly chopped celery now i don't have a zucchini so if i have i think i'm going to go a little extra on the celery and add in that cauliflower with this stock recipe, even the one on Cookie Doo for chicken stock, you quite often will use whiter vegetables as opposed to um, your carrots, etc. So you could use root vegetables like parsnip as well. Um, so yeah, no zucchini. So that's 156. We want 
100 grams of zucchini roughly chopped. So let's just put our cauliflower in. Yep, that's good enough. And then it says it wants leek roughly chopped. So a while ago I was making something and I had the top of the leek and I've had it sitting in the freezer. Hello Germany. Welcome, welcome. So what I'm going to do is use the top of the leek. So use the nice white part for your soups, etc. And the green part of the top can go great in your stock. So that's been sitting in the freezer. It's slightly defrosted now. I'm going to put that in as well. So we want one brown onion cut in half again. And if you could smell my kitchen right now, you'd all be dead jealous because stock cooking is the most beautiful smell on the planet, but don't eat it. It tastes salty. So. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? Oh, pumpkins. We're talking about Halloween, are we, people? Yeah, I, I don't do Halloween. I'm one of the, I grew up in the era where it was a time when strange people went and hung out at ce uh, cemeteries. <laughs> I'm that old. So, onion cut in half again. So then we want a or oh, tomato again. So we've got the tomato sitting here, having a wash in, in the water. And then we want a handful of mixed herbs, parsley, sage, thyme, and rosemary. So, I don't wanna use all this parsley, I wanna save it, because I'm sure I'll have something else I need parsley for in the next day or so. So I've just got the parsley sitting in a jar and it's been in the fridge. So it's all good. I will just cut off these big sort of stalky bits at the bottom there. And I literally, this is all I do. I just break it into the bowl. So I've got beautiful basil from the garden. Right, I've got some rosemary. And I have little thyme. So I thoroughly recommend to anyone who has a Thermomix or if you're thinking of getting one, start your little herb patch. Honestly, it's so good to have a little herb garden of your own. It will save you a fortune in the end too because you'll have them right there in your backyard. And all these sorts of herbs just really look after themselves and they grow quite nicely without a lot of attention. So, <laughs> you don't like the rosemary? Then leave the rosemary out, darling. Simply, this is whatever herbs you like. You can also, if you don't have fresh, Use dried herbs. Now, quite often people say to me, I can't buy sage. So I have sage in the garden. However, this is a packet I've picked up on sale. When you see your herbs on sale like that, pop them in the freezer. They kind of dry, but it's still exactly the same. So always have herbs in your freezer. When you see them on special, or at least, if nothing else, use your dry herbs. So I'm gonna put a little bit of sage in there. Only because I love, I love, love, love sage. It's amazing. So I'll put back what I don't use. That will go back in the freezer for another stock. So once we do that, we're going to add some black peppercorns. So it says three black peppercorns specifically. One, two, three. We're going to add in some more garlic. And this one actually has a, a good amount of garlic. It says five cloves. Oh, there's a little bit of broccoli. Let's put that in as well. I don't know where that came from. Probably it was with the um, cauliflower from last night's dish. You get to buy all the ingredients. You get the keys on Friday, Dimity. That's so amazing. Yes, have a little herb garden. Herb gardens are amazing. And you can have them in pots. You can have them in your garden garden. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I really, really recommend have your own little patch of herbs. Basic things like rosemary. You can grow it in a pot. Basil. Um, thyme. In fact, bunnings are quite good. They usually have little mixed pots of all different little fresh herbs in one pot and they're amazing they really are amazing so 
do that. You know what? I'm going to the shops and buy all the ingredients. Gigi! Who's Gigi? Do I know Gigi? Over there on TikTok. Hey, Janet. Instagram, you don't talk to me like TikTok talks to me. <laughs> it's me. Who's me? Who's me, Gigi? <laughs> Chicken go old because it's raw and sits there. Salt preserves it. You've got the black thermo and a normal thermo. Um, the chicken in the stock, I freeze my chicken stock, although it says, right, store in it in the freezer for up to six months. Um, yeah, I love this. The tip in the Skinny Mixes recipe says, we do not recommend tasting the stock. It does not taste as good as it smells, and that is true. So... But this one, I, I, and I agree, I keep my chicken in the freezer. I just, my brain can't compute having meat in the fridge for months. But you can, simple as that. Yes, Lily, you like that little pack? Yeah. So chicken in the freezer is, is, um, well, and it just, it'll scoop. I wondered if I had a cat at my feet then. No, I don't. The chicken will just scoop directly from the freezer. Um, no brainer, it's so easy. Oh, there's another little piece of time. Let me put the little bits in. Might put another little bit, because thyme and chicken is a lovely combination. It's like lamb and rosemary is. Chicken and thyme is fantastic. It's an unusual smelling herb, but it's, it is really good. All right, so don't be shy with your herbs. Okay, so a bay leaf as well. Now, when I posted a video on TikTok showing all the ingredients of this stock paste, it went off. And people weren't happy with me using a bay leaf in stock. I don't know why. Because at the end of the day, if we knew what was in our stock, we would not eat it at all. So at least this one I know exactly what's in it. Apple cider vinegar is the next ingredient in this one. The one on Cookie Do uses wine. So if you wanted to use um, this instead of wine using the Cookie Do recipe, you just would put maybe a third vinegar to the rest water. All right, so let's bring up the scales. We want 30 grams. All right, so again, my bowl is to the brim. I think you can even spot that on Instagram. Okay, so what we need to do now is put our lid on. Stick that in there. Right, and we are going to chop that on speed eight for about 15 seconds. So let's set the timer and go speed eight on this one. Bearing in mind that chicken is down the bottom. Oh, Lily, that's good to know. So, bearing in mind the chicken was down the bottom, I'm using that spatula to help stir things along again. There's a little bit of chicken up here on the lid. Just flip that down in there. Again, let me show you. What was a full bowl is now a totally chopped up, basically sloppy mess, we could say, but this is stock, guys. We're going to now cook that and turn it into something spectacular. So again, just making sure you scrape that down. All right, and then we're adding in the same rock salt. So 
So I must put this on the list because I'm sure this is going to be it for me. Let's bring up the scale so we know what we're doing. I'm so spoiled with guided cooking that when I go manual, I really feel out of my depth. <laughs> Definitely need to put rock salt on the shopping list. And then we want uh, a little bit of water, isn't it? So add the salt and 50 grams of water. So using my measuring cup, a bit more. Okay, and then the same process. I need to find my other simmering basket, which is here. And I'll shut the lid because this is going in the freezer. I've got a, a container for the freezer. So we're cooking this one for 30 minutes. So it's a bit longer. Thirty minutes. Varoma or steaming temperature, speed two. Place simmering basket on top. So that's perfect timing because now we're down to three minutes on the veggie stock. So what I'm actually going to do is very carefully take that off. Bearing in mind it's hot, right? That's all steamed up and clean from the stock that's within. It's cool. And I'm gonna clean up a bit of mess here because I have stuff everywhere. So, hello Beverly Dunn. I oh, know Sally, I'm <laughs> with you. Gee, are you a lover of cookie do? I really, really I'm just a fan, let's be honest. I mean, manual cooking is wonderful. I love that people are creative. I'm not so creative. Um, I have all these books on the shelf and they really do get neglected. This is the one thing that I will make manually because I do love this particular recipe. But otherwise, give me cookie do any day. I love guided cooking. It is my favorite thing in the world. So, Right, let me just clean up all these scraps here. And this is where I wish I had a chicken, because, you know, scraps and chicken. But most of this is really garlic and onion skins, skins, stalks of herbs, etc. Nothing terribly salvageable. So into the bin that goes. Right off there. You don't need carrot in this one. Oh, you know what I was going to do? I was going to add a bit of spinach to both. I'm going to do it now through the hole. Because it's just a little bit more green and goodness going in. So, being careful. Obviously that will steam quickly in the veggie one. And then it'll be blitzed up when we mix it all together. Take that lid out. Just adding a bit because it needs using up. So rather than wasting it, let's chuck it in there and use it up. Zach, I'm sure you'll be great with your manual cooking. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> oh, you make Play-Doh manually. Yes. No. You know why it's not on there? It's because it's not a food item. We're not really supposed to have non-food items on cookie do. Just in case someone accidentally makes it and thinks they can eat it which you probably could eat it and that reminds me i've got to go tomorrow morning to the shops and get some little containers from silly sollies and make some play-doh to take to the markets tomorrow night uh, monica and i were handing it out last time we were there and it was a real hit for the kids so oh it's done all right so let's move some stuff out the way 
push you back a bit more if we can. Slide you round and over, carefully. Cords pulled underneath. Sometimes wish I had an even bigger kitchen, but that's okay. All right, so we're going to carefully take that off now. And we're going to replace it with our measuring cup because we are going to turn this now into a total paste. Oh, Lily, don't I want to put cookies on now. So now I'm going to go to speed five. And because the machine is hot, it will slowly get to speed five. And then we're going up to speed nine, so I'm not going to be able to talk because you won't hear me. flavor for all of your food okay so this is why I constantly will say please make your stock pace all right now another little tip every time you make it it will be an entirely different color which I think is really wonderful now adding in that spinach I have the most beautiful greeny looking gold going on in here now using my lid as a funnel I'm going to put that into my hot jar there. So it's good to have a hot jar when you're putting in something hot. Because I have been to people's houses and we've put hot stock into skinny cold jars and they've gone crack. So it is the best when it's fresh. There's no doubt about it. So you absolutely can freeze all of the stock pastes. They won't go solid. They will last longer. Um, I always will say if you've got friends who have a Thermomix, get together and make up a batch of veggie, meat and chicken and do a swap. Share it out. I think it's a really good idea because it will last for a while if you've definitely got all three, that's for sure. But I generally do stick to, I've made the meat one, but I generally stick to my chicken and veggie. All right, so again, my same tip that I always give you, don't go continually scraping around those blades. Now the bowl is hot, so it will take a little minute to get up to speed. But by popping your lid back on, come out of here, and it says put it into a jar and in the fridge, and just put it up to top speed. Take a little second to get there. There is a beef stock recipe. It's called meat stock paste. Zach? Meat stock paste. So basically, the skinny mixes version that I have here is used chicken or steak. And steak can be chuck steak, gravy beef, doesn't, don't go buy an eye fillet for stock, that would be crazy. So, now we're going to get everything out without dragging our spatula around those sharp blades. So, getting right in around the edge, we've got that there. Now, another little hot tip, if you had some time and a jar to put it into, you could definitely leave 
around two tablespoons of stock in here. Fill the bowl into the little one mark on the side. So we have a dot, a one, a dot, a two, and then a max line. So two tablespoons to one litre of water makes a liquid stock ready to go. And that will last for a while in the fridge as well. Um, or put on and make yourself something savoury, like make a vegetable soup there and then. But um, I've got pretty much all of that out of there and I'm happy with that. So I'll leave it at that. So there's my beautiful jar full of delicious stock paste. That's the veggie. Done. Tick. Right. While that's still got 20 minutes to go here, I'm going to rinse out my bowl, put this on a free clean. It'll be a very quick one because it's not even that dirty. With stock, it's water soluble. So, in fact, well, let me show you my quick clean rather than the free clean. So a bit of dishwashing liquid, water halfway, lid on, measuring cup on, okay? And then we're gonna turn it to speed eight. And where the blades are, tap there, it's going back the other way. Tap again. One more time. And that's a quick clean. Okay, so stock paste is definitely something you should make, but it's also something that's water soluble. So to clean that bowl is super simple. So that's all you have to do. All right, so I'll leave that there. And what I'm gonna do is finish up the recording over on Instagram because You've seen the stock, same process will happen with the chicken. So thank you for watching, thank you for joining. If you've watched this on replay, let me know. All right, see you guys.